Hey, this is Eric, and welcome to Control Alt Achieve for March 18th, 2020. Today's topic using Screencastify for remote teaching. Hey, this is Eric, and in this video, we're going to take a look at using Screencastify for remote teaching. Now, while recording this video, we are in the midst of the COVID-19 situation, so a lot of schools are not in session. Instead, the students are at home learning, and the teachers are teaching from home, and there's a lot of great resources out there, and a lot of great content that we can share with students, but still, nothing replaces the teacher themselves. And so, wouldn't it be great if there was an easy way for teachers to record themselves and their instruction and share that with students? Well, this is what we're going to look at here in this short video on using Screencastify. We're going to take a look at what Screencastify is, how to install it, the basic use of it, talk about a few examples of how that could be used for teaching, and finally, how to share the videos that you create. So first of all, let's talk about what is Screencastify. So it is a Chrome web extension that is free that can be used to record your screen, your webcam, and your voice. And you can record for up to five minutes at a time and make as many videos as you would like to. While you're doing the recording, you can annotate on top of the screen. You can then save the videos to your Google Drive after it's done recording. And of course, trim those up if there's a little dead space on the beginning or end of the video that you need to. And then finally, you can share or export the final video so it can be uh, shared with your students. So let's talk about getting Screencastify installed. It is a Chrome web extension, so you're going to need to head out to the Chrome Web Store at chrome.google.com slash web store. Now, once you get there, you can scroll through all the different extensions that are available. But to uh, jump right to Screencastify, we're just going to go ahead and run a search for it here. And there it is. Now you can install it right away by clicking on Add to Chrome, or if you want to click on it first and read a little bit more about it, that is fine as well. But at some point, we need to click on the big blue button that says Add to Chrome. They'll ask for permission, and we'll let that go ahead and install. Now, the first time you do this, it'll take just a little bit of time to do the installation. And as soon as it has been installed, you're going to notice there's going to be a little pop-up button in the top right-hand corner where Screencastify is installed, and there it is. Looks like a little play button with a camera on it. That's the icon for Screencastify. Now that we've got that installed, we can click on that anytime that we want to record our screen. Now, the very first time we do this, it is going to have a couple more permissions that's going to ask for, and we'll go ahead and take you through that process and show what that looks like. So let me go ahead and pop over to another screen here. I'm just going to pull up one of my blog posts from my Control Alt Achieve site, and we'll use this as our demonstration. So what I'm do is go on up to Screencastify and give a click on that extension. And like I said, the very first time I do it, because I haven't used it on this account before, it does take you through a little bit of a setup procedure. We do need to sign in with our Google account. Give that a moment to pop up, and it's going to ask us what account we want to use. Just using a demo account here for this example here today. And I'm going to give it permission to save things to my Google Drive. Fantastic. After that first step, it is now going to ask for permission to use my camera and my microphone. So we'll click on the Allow button and again click Allow and Allow to give it those needed permissions. And finally, we just need to say who we are. We'll say that we're an educator teaching in a grade school. And that's it. Everything is all set up now and ready to go. We won't have to go through that process in the future. So let's go ahead and use Screencastify. Go back over to the blog post here, and let's say I wanted to do a screen recording. So what I'm going to do is click on the Screencastify extension, and you'll see that I can choose from either recording just my browser tab. So if all I want to record is just what's on this one page, perfectly fine. Another option is to record my desktop. Now, if I choose that, what that means is I want to record everything on my screen, meaning I could record that, but I could also jump over to other tabs, or I could bring up other programs. And if that's what you need to do, then that's the best choice. And then lastly, I can just record my webcam if I just want it to be showing 
myself rather than what's on the screen. For this quick example to show you how this works, we're going to record the browser tab. You'll see it already has my microphone turned on. If that wasn't working, you could select the mic from the drop down menu there. I can then decide if I want to embed my webcam or not. Um, for this example, I will. So I'll go ahead and turn that on and I will select my web camera. Now you don't have to embed your web camera, but it is a nice way to make these videos a little more personal for your students and have that connection with them. But again, that is always your choice. There are a few more options below here if you want to adjust some of these, such as making sure the drawing tools are turned on if you want to do some on-screen annotation. Also, if your computer is going to be making any noise during this time, you can turn on tab audio as well. That way it can record any sounds if the computer has audio itself that you're trying to record in this example. Uh, that would not be the case. All right, let's go ahead and click record. And it's going to do a quick little countdown. And as soon as that's done, oh, hey, there I am down in the bottom corner there. Um, now it is recording the video. I can move my webcam around if I want to put it in different spots of the screen. I can make it larger or smaller, or I could just close out of it entirely. If I don't want to have the webcam recording anymore, that's fine. And now it's recording everything on my screen here. As I scroll on down through the page, I can click on anything, highlight things. Uh, I did mention that we do have the uh, annotation tool, um, annotation tools at the bottom. If you go down to the bottom, you'll see there's a pencil that I can use if I want to draw on the screen, circle things, annotate things um, as well. There's also a couple other tools such as the focus tool that darkens everything except for this uh, spotlight that moves around on the screen there for you. Now when you're all done recording what's on your screen, remember you got five minutes that you can record at a time, you can head back up to Screencastify, give a click on that. Of course you can pause at any point if you just need to pause and start again, but we're going to go ahead and hit stop and say that we're done. And that's it. As simple as that, it has now recorded my screen, recorded my webcam, recorded my voice, and it is currently saving that to my Google Drive. Now we'll let that go ahead and save and give that a moment to do that and chat a little bit more about the sort of things we could do with Screencastify. So the example we just looked at was if we wanted to record, for example, a web page. But we could record lots of things. Maybe you've got a set of notes in a Google document and you want to work down through those notes. You could be recording that on your screen. Or like earlier, when we were looking at our Google Slideshow. Absolutely, we could have a Google Slideshow with all of our notes and we could be recording that with Screencastify while we talk through that. Or we could use um, a tool like... Uh, Chrome Canvas. This is a digital whiteboard tool. There's a lot of different tools that do, do these sort of things, but this is one example at canvas.apps.chrome. So this allows me to draw on the screen like with a virtual whiteboard. If I was, for example, a math teacher and needed to work out a problem, I could use Chrome Canvas to do that math problem while recording my screen. Now keep in mind I don't have to be using Screencastify to record my screen. I could just be using it to record my web camera instead. There may be some times where you just want to do a, um, uh, an instruction where you are speaking to the students and maybe you've got your own physical whiteboard behind you that you're writing on. In that case we could go back up to the Screencastify extension, give a click on that, and we could choose the webcam only option. I'll go ahead and do that just real quick as an example. Hit record. Now it's going to pop that open into a new window and I will need to drag that over onto the screen here. So let me go ahead and move it over. There it is. A little larger there. I'll fit that in onto the screen. There we go. And so now it's just recording my webcam only. So if I had a whiteboard behind me that I wanted to write on or if I needed to demonstrate something physical, I could just record with the webcam as well and use that for my instruction. Whatever the case, when I'm done, I simply would go back up and click on the stop button to stop that recording. And now there it is. Hey, there I am. Awesome. Very good. So let's talk about now what to do after the recording is finished. So a couple of key things to point out to you after the recording is done. You can, of course, play it to preview it and see how the recording went. Up in the top, you can change the title of the recording if you would like to. Not a bad idea if you're doing a lot of these recordings and want to keep straight which lesson it is or which part of a lesson it is that you're working on. So you can certainly rename that. If you got some dead space at the beginning or the end, you can trim that off with the scissors there. Um, and then most importantly, over here on the right hand side are the options for sharing this video with your students. Now keep in mind, it is private to start with. So what we do need to do is go up into the top right hand corner and click on this big blue button that says copy shareable link if we want to make the video viewable by others. So I'll go ahead and click on copy shareable link and give that just a moment. And what that's doing is it is sharing the video so that anybody with the link is able to view it and it's copied. 
copying that now into the memory. So now you could take that link and you could put it in whatever learning management system you use, whether it's Schoology or Canvas or let's say Google Classroom. So I'll pop over to my demo classroom here. And let's say I wanted to share this video with my students now. I could go to my Classwork tab and I could create an assignment, for example. And if I wanted to add that video, there's a lot of options here we could do. I could click, I could click on the Add button there and say I want to add a link. And I could paste in the link that I just copied. And there it's going to put in that video that we just created. Or because it is being saved to my Google Drive, like we mentioned, it is saved in our Google Drive, I could simply click the Add button and just go to my Google Drive and I could find the video sitting in there as well. And there it is sitting right there and I could add the video in that way as well. You could also, of course, take that copied link and put it out in an email, put it on a website, um, add it to your Google site, uh, whatever method you would like to, to share that video with others. In addition to copying the shareable link, there are a couple other shortcuts here that can save you a little bit of time. If you know you are definitely sending it to Google Classroom, rather than, rather than copying the link and putting it in Classroom, you can also just come down here and click on the Share to Classroom button, where it's going to ask you to pick which class you want to share it to, and then how you want to share that, an assignment or an announcement, material, etc. like that. If you want to publish it to YouTube, there's a direct link for that as well, or if you want to embed it into a website. Or of course, you can always just download the video, and at the very bottom, you do have options to download the video as well, and then you can do whatever with it after that that you would like to. Well, hopefully that gave you a good overview on how to install Screencastify, how to record videos, and how to share those videos with your students. As always, you can share any questions, comments, resources, or any other feedback you have in several ways. You can leave comments below the blog post. You can leave comments on the YouTube video, leave a review in iTunes, uh, tag me on Twitter at Eric Kurtz, or use the hashtag Control Alt Achieve, or of course, just send an email to Eric at Control Alt Achieve.com. I will try to share comments from time to time in future episodes. So until the next episode, be kind to each other and be kind to yourself.